Yes, sir. For today's episode, we will have the continuation of the team preview series featuring the Orlando Magic. And of course, we still have the top five plays of the night. The Dropping Dimes podcast starts right about now. Yes, sir. What's up, Dimers? So before we start the episode, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe and hit on the notification bell so that you can follow all the episodes of the Dropping Dimes podcast by J.I. Dimes. Feel free also to comment your thoughts, to like the video, and to share the video. So for today, we'll have the continuation of the team preview series of the Orlando Magic. Again, for those who would like to follow us, you can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, the episodes are also available on Spotify and Anchor. Let's proceed. This one. So these are the main storylines for the Orlando Magic. Follow them on Instagram at Magic. First, one of the biggest storylines for them, they lost Jonathan Isaac during the bubble ACL injury. They will heavily, heavily rely on Nick Vucevic and Evan Fournier. They also still have Terrence Ross, who provides them with buckets and athleticism. They're also hoping for the continuous resurgence of former number one pick, Markel Fultz. And of course, Aaron Gordon. Sporting the new hairstyle, by the way. And then they drafted former UNC point guard and son of Greg Anthony, Cole Anthony. These are the things that we need to remember uh, about the things that happened with the Orlando Magic last season. So they were 33 and 40. That was good for eighth in the Eastern Conference. Uh, Steve Clifford is their coach, and their main executive is Jeff Weltman. Offensive rating, they were only 23rd, but their defensive rating, that's where they were elite. 10th in the league that's also that also translated with their opposition points per game at fifth in the league even though of course they struggled offensively only 24th in points per game and 25th also when it comes to their pace so, so far the magic has played two exhibition games already they won their first game against the Hawks and then just a while ago, they lost to the Atlanta Hawks also, 107 to 116. They will still be playing LaMelo Ball, Gordon Hayward, and the rest of the Charlotte Hornets at the Amway Arena. Now, these are the key additions of the Orlando Magic. They added Dwayne Bacon, the former Hornet, and they also drafted Cole Anthony, number 15 in the recent 2020 draft. As for their returning players, we have Nick Vucevic, Aaron Gordon, Evan Fournier, Markel Fultz, Darren Strauss. They're still waiting on Mo Bamba. They're hoping he would, you know, start breaking out. They re-signed Michael Carter-Williams and a big loss to, because Jonathan Isaac will be out for the season because of that ACL injury during the bubble. Now, as for the stats of the Magic last season, 
So this is again courtesy of basketballreference.com for all the latest stats. Basketballreference.com. It's the way to go. So as as mentioned earlier, they struggled offensively. They were only 24th in points. The field goal percentages 27, three point percentage only 25th, free throw percentage uh, a little better at 17th. But how did the Magic, uh, even though they were below 500, how were they able to make it to the playoffs? It was because of their elite defense. They were fifth in uh, points allowed, so that was really really good. And look at the percentages of their opponents, 18th in the league when it comes to field goal percentage. And when it comes to three-point percentage, 23rd. So not so much there, but with where did they really get it? From their blocks, 12th in blocks, 5th in steals. And their defensive rating as well was elite. They were 10th in the league. So even if they were struggling offensively, 25th in pace and 23rd in offensive rating, they were able to... Um, make up for it through their defense. Okay, so let's now proceed to their player stats. So looking at their player stats, uh, a little disappointing for Aaron Gordon to only average 14.4 points and 7.7 rebounds. A lot of people are still waiting for him to like break out. Didn't also shoot the ball well from three, only 31%. Uh, Nick Vucevic was solid, double-double, 19.6 points and 10.9 rebounds to go with. He also dished out 3.6 assists and got the ball very decent, even from deep, 34%. Evan Fournier, always underrated, averaged 18.5 points, shot 40% from deep. Pretty special player, but again, no one is talking about him much. So what are my thoughts and predictions for the Orlando Magic this upcoming season? Of course, we're very fortunate that they're playing in the Eastern Conference. They have an all-star center in Nick Vucevic. But they did lose Jonathan Isaac, who was starting to really play well for them. So he would be... And then, you know, even if Terrence Ross, let's say, tries to fill in that role, he's... He's not that lengthy compared to Jonathan Isaac. Remember, the calling card of the Magic is their defense. Uh, if guys like Mo Bamba can show up, that would be good for them. Maybe Cole Anthony can provide some offense, even though he struggled <laughs> during their preseason games or has struggled so far. Uh, I'm not so sure if the Magic can make it back to the playoffs, especially because there are certain teams that like the Hawks and uh, Wizards, you know, they're, they've improved. Well, the Magic practically added a draft pick and Cole Anthony lost Jonathan Isaac and signed Dwayne Bacon. That was it. You know, so, kind of worried for them. If Aaron Gordon continues to struggle, meaning if he continues to play like, you know, this so-so average player kind of thing remain to be that so-so average kind of player uh, it will be hard for the Magic to get back to the playoffs even if their defense is quite good and that will be affected by the fact that again they lost guys like Isaac and it's not like Cole Anthony is a guard who can provide a lot of defense he's really known more for his offense right so worst case scenario for the magic is if they they don't make it so they're gonna be like around 10th 11th or 12th and then best best case scenario again for them is to make it to the eighth seed in the eastern conference so that is it for my thoughts and predictions on the Orlando magic let's now proceed to the top plays the night and now it's time to go to our top plays for the night at number five we have Danny FDJ for three yes the best Israeli prospect 
ever come out of Israel. Now at number four, we have... Oh, Rui with a board and a finish. Yes, sir. Rui Hachimura representing. Look at this again. Rebound and smack it out over KD. Now at number three. Let's go to number three. Oh, look at the passing by the Lakers. Mark Gasol, KCP, TH. T four three and Trez loving it at number two. We have ah, oh, he calls himself World B flat Kyrie. Yeah, in spite of all his so called uniqueness when it comes to his basketball skills and talent. Oh my goodness, this guy is a flat out baller look at that oh money money for Kyrie perfect and at number one look who's back yes sir welcome back KD oh, with the lush Kevin Durant back on the floor once again for the the Nets. First time, by the way, KD for the Nets. And now for our shout outs. Special shout out to uh, one of our top followers and supporters of the podcast. Happy birthday, Bob Lawrence Caridad. Yes, sir. Enjoy your day, Bob, and keep safe. Always. And before we end the episode again, if you want to follow all the episodes of the Dropping Dimes podcast, kindly subscribe and hit on the notification bell. Feel free to share the video, comment your thoughts. Yes, I would really appreciate that if you would comment your thoughts and like the video as well. So that is it for our episode today. And we'll see you again on the next episode of the Dropping Dimes podcast podcast this is J.I. Dimes singing that regardless of how weird you are Kyrie damn it you're still a super ball see you on the next episode again keep safe everyone